Ducks fans, are you ready? You are listening to the Ducks and Pucks podcast. This is the number one home for Anaheim Ducks talk and analysis. Here we go. Welcome to the show. This is your host, Mike Walters, along with my co-host, Eddie Richard, who is back after his uh, two-week absence, two or three-week absence, I don't know, whatever it was, but uh, he's back. Uh, We have tons of things to discuss on the show. The Ducks are on a three-game winning streak, uh, some controversy in their last game. They're now on their all-star break. We've got uh, Troy Terry that's attending that, and, and, and a little bit more controversy, I guess, with that going on. Uh, we finally had a, a trade happen as well to talk about, and a few, a few other things going on. A, a lot of interesting topics on this show this time. But uh, I talked about Eddie uh, on the last couple shows. I had Thomas fill in on one. I talked to Alexis Downey on the last one. Uh, I didn't go into full detail. I, I know Eddie uh, talked about some stuff on social media, if you if you saw it or didn't see it, but uh, I didn't want to go into too much because I wanted um, Eddie to, you know, when you came back on to have the floor and kind of tell people, um, you know, just what's going on. Uh, And, you know, you've had understandably an extremely rough time uh, in the last three or four weeks. So I'm glad that we could at least get together and do another show while you've got a lot of stuff going on. But um, the floor is yours, Eddie. Uh, I'm glad you're back. Yeah, uh, if you guys uh, don't follow social media or if you haven't heard, uh, my father abruptly passed away. It was just so uh, sudden and shocking. Um, there's a little more to that. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. Uh, so it's just like even uh, more uh, gut-wrenching and, and heartbreaking for my brother and I to, to be dealing with this. right? Not dealing with it, but just kind of accepting it. Um, my dad was the reason why I became a Ducks fan and hockey fan. He took me to my first Ducks game. He uh, he wanted me to play hockey. His uh, his girlfriend at the time, uh, her son wanted to play hockey, and he thought I should be playing hockey. So it was a nice gentleman's sport. He wanted me to play. I didn't want I didn't want to play. I hated him for it. Like what the hell is hockey? Like the sport's stupid. No one even plays it. Whatever. So he wanted to take me to my first game, just to, like make you kind of get my head, you know, just liking it. So I'm like, oh, okay. So he went to back in the day, uh, Ticketmaster back in '95. To go to watch the the LA Kings play, uh, they weren't playing at that time, and then the guy suggested like, "Hey, uh, the Anaheim Ducks are playing." Blah blah blah. Like, like okay, where are they playing out of the Anaheim? Hello, the Anaheim Ducks. So we went to that game. I I, I forgot which team they were playing. I, I don't even know what team they were playing, but I remember going to my first game, and I was just hooked. I remember my dad. We were sitting at the top, and then. Uh, toward the end of the game, the seats, he noticed they were like really like empty in the bottom. So he kind of snuck me down there and I got to see all those greats. I got to see uh, uh, my favorite player, Team Uslani. I got to see Paul Korea. I just, man, I just fell in love with the, the, the game from there. Uh, I, I want to say it was 95, maybe closer to 96. I, I'm not really sure, but I know that moment hooked me as becoming a, a Ducks fan, hooked me on becoming a hockey fan. So it's like I can always uh, have that for him. Um, yeah, it's not uh, been easy. It's been kind of rough, but I'm hanging in there. Uh, I appreciate all the support. The support has been just just amazing. Uh, it's it's kind of lifting my spirits up, and I couldn't have uh, kind of been here without you guys, so thank you. Uh, Mike, too. Oh, man, Mike. Yeah, Mike donated. If you guys don't know, Mike donated to the GoFundMe 500, and my family was just like, well, who's, who's this Mike? Who's this Mike? And it's like, this is my brother, too. So it's like, I'm sure that you're feeling the pain that I feel seeing your uh, your brother hurt like this but hey uh just like my dad would, would want the, the show must go on and i mean i wasn't and i still don't feel that strong enough but i feel like ready to talk and, and be on the show and and try to contribute too it just uh, now it's a lot going on in my life but i'm just so grateful thankful for everyone alexis downey too she's been a sweetheart i'm glad that she uh jumped on the show i respect her a lot she's one of the best voices in hockey and she's been supportive and sending her condolences. Uh, Timu Slani too. I, I just he just keeps getting better and better. I don't know if he wants to put this out here, but he sent me a message too, uh, uh, just showing his love for me and, and wishing condolences and and, and that really uh, lifts my spirit up and stuff like that. So um, a lot's changed in my life. Uh, the new job now. I'm taking over my dad's business with my brother. And we just kind of have to be strong and go for him and kind of live life and his uh, memory each and every day. And 
I shout out to my brother too. Like my brother and I, I've never felt this close to my brother, but him and I are just kind of leaning on each other and man, we're beating each other. It's rock and, and just, just the love and, and, and compassion of my brother each and every day show each other just to lift our spirits up. Uh, it's just, yeah, just the support from everyone. Uh, I just, I keep it at my worst times. It's just like, it's not been easy. Losing a parent's never the easiest thing in the world. And like I was told before, and I wrote too on my social media, it just, this is never going to be the same. And I'm never going to be the same person in life. It just, something was ripped out of me. And I just had to learn to overcome and adapt. And, and like I said, live in his memory. Um, I felt like last year I went through a lot and then my whole life turned around and I was just at the best I can be with the gym, with my, my social status, with my career. So I think I want to say that the, the universe and I guess my dad's spirit that he believed in, uh, he believed in God, I guess that just kind of prepared me for what was going to happen uh, come that, uh, that January uh, 17th. But I, I'm still holding strong. And like I said, I love you guys and I appreciate all your support all your messages and I apologize I haven't been like been able to respond to a lot of DMs uh some days I just break down I just keep crying I I just can't do it just to, to deal with it so yeah I don't mean to ramble on but uh, I just once again I, I I am just grateful and and always thankful that my dad introduced me to the sport of hockey because if it wasn't for him I wouldn't have known all of you and I wouldn't have known all this love and support uh, that I've been showing to uh, even Phil uh, Hewlett too. Uh, he he showed his love and support and just it just it, the like, the whole list goes on. I can name a lot of you guys and every each and every one of you. It, it's, I want to. It's just yeah. It's so much emotions going through my mind right now. But uh, I just thank you, Dad, for for making me play hockey, for taking my first Ducks game, and and thank you for the opportunity I have to to have all the love and support from all of you guys and and your friendships too. So yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, well said, Eddie. A uh, couple good things in there. Uh, similar things, you know, my mom was the same way as your dad. You know, she took me to my first Ducks game, uh, the first one in 93. Uh, I think I've talked about it before and, you know, bought a, a mini plan and, you know, I got hooked on going to the Ducks games and become a Ducks fan. And now I'm in the same boat as you. I mean, you and I wouldn't have met, <clears throat> you know, if your dad wouldn't have gotten you into hockey and my, my mom wouldn't have gotten me into hockey. Kind of, kind of weird how that all works out, and and like you said too, we wouldn't know all of you out there um, in social media and, and that listen to the podcast, the people we meet at the games and the watch parties, um, you know, the players we run into, all, all kinds of stuff. I mean, very, very fortunate um, the stuff that has you know happened because of that and the way that our lives have now you know crossed paths and whatnot. Um, very, very interesting how how it just kind of worked out. It's just just interesting that that we're in the same boat you know yeah and you know what that kind of motivated me like too because like i just didn't feel like i'd be ready to come back uh, to like do the show for a while um i, I can't even still uh i can't even play hockey uh, right now and i, I want to play hockey and i feel bad for for not playing because i was getting back into the game and loving it but i mean i have to pass uh on my way to the rink i have to pass for my dad passed away it's just too hard and him introducing me to this sport it's just too hard right now and and I don't want to do anything stupid too. Let's just let my emotions get to the best of me and and, and do something where I'm gonna to try to hurt someone or, or just act stupid and, and beardly. But I think like Mike, like what happened uh, with your situation too when you're in Vegas, that, that kind of motivated me too because like that next show you were on there and and I I wish I was stronger and I wish I was strong enough to jump on the next show. I just I literally could, just couldn't do it. And but yeah, I, I love how patient and you didn't pressure me. You just you gave me time. You always checked up on me. Uh, I texted you some emotions I was having, and you're like, yeah, that, that's normal. Like, you went through the same thing, too, with your mother. So just kind of leaning on, like, on you, too, for that. That was awesome. And also a shout-out to the Ducks, too. Like, I get a random uh, a response from them, too, sending their love and condolences. So that, that that's kind of really great for their organization uh, and their social media team uh, to do that. that. That that means a lot. Like I said, like each and every one of your messages – your your tweets, your replies, everything. It's just it's overwhelmingly amazing, and it just that makes me just keep uh, keep my head up. Uh, and uh, you know, Mike too, especially. You just you, I, I can lean on you, ask you, text you. You're always responding back. You're always checking in on me if I'm okay, making sure I'm still okay to do the show and everything. It's just 
I, I just you gave me the strength to be on the show today, and I just wanted to just thank you for that. Well, the thing is, is um, you know, it, this is the thing that I tell people because it's been a weird time right now. Um, a lot of uh, people that uh, I, I know um, through work and other friends, I, I don't know what's going on. It, there's just been a lot of losses lately, and I think I talked. I, I, t- I think I talked about that. What was it? Twenty. 2020 or 2021 I can't remember there was a there was a real rough time uh, there as well and I, I the, the biggest thing that I tell people is <clears throat> and, and and Eddie and I we talked about this you know the last couple weeks we just talked about it before on the show too is for anybody out there that has gone through this you, you know what I'm talking about you lost a loved one whether it's a brother uh, sister you know mother father uh, child whatever. Whatever, however you deal with it, it's not um, right or wrong. That's just the biggest thing I try to tell everybody. Um, you may not want to get out of bed for however long and be crying. Um, you may want to go right back to work because you want to be distracted. Uh, you may start punching holes in the wall. You may get drunk. I mean, I don't know. There's there's a whole variety of responses that can happen and um, I think the best thing when talking to people about this is, you know, you want to you want to get those emotions, but it's going to come out different ways for everybody. I, I mean, for me, like when you talk about the show and, and you weren't ready, that's totally fine. You know, um, I don't know that I was ready either, but I was just kind of in my mind like, F it. Let's just let's just do it. You know what I mean? And, and that's just kind of how I felt. And, and, and it's not right or wrong. It's just wherever you're at. And you're trying to deal with that situation. And this can, you know, go for other situations. Any tough time that you're going through, you, you know, there's different emotions and, and reactions that you have. And I, I just think it's important to realize what they are. And try to figure out your your way of, of dealing with it. Like I said, people deal with things in different ways. Um, obviously, like you point out, you don't want to be destructive, of course. You you want to find some way to, uh, to deal with you know, the negative feelings and the pain and, and whatever else that comes with it and, and kind of work through it. And, and that's the goal. The goal is to work through it. You know, um, time, time heals all wounds, right? They, that's one of the sayings. And, and, I, and, and again, even that, like for some people, it's, you know, months, it's years, whatever. And again, there's no right or wrong in that either. So it's just, just kind of some things that, you know, I try to, uh, pass along to other people, especially now that I've been in this situation. Now you have too, Eddie. Yeah, and uh, I, like what's on better, like everyone, if you ever experience this, uh, please reach out to me. Um, I, I can just talk to you or give you guidance and, and kind of not really help you, but kind of guide you through it. Uh, I had a, a hockey buddy that just called me out of the blue the other day. I texted him like, hey, what's going on? He's like, oh, can you call me back? I want to talk to you. Uh, he lost his mother in November and he just wanted to check up on me. A guy I went to high school with, played hockey with, and he's just... Just things like that, it's like, okay, that, that, it's just, I, I, I don't know, like, I do want to punch holes in the wall, I want to be destructive, but the love that I'm getting from so many people, and the love that, like, my dad would always just send out, he wouldn't want me to do that, like, like, I, like I said, my brother and I are, are kind of taking over and trying to run his business, too, just to keep his legacy, and every client that I talk to of his are always just, and like utter disbelief about how his passing and they all say the same thing oh your dad was so nice a few of his clients have donated money they want to go to his funeral one of the clients actually went to the hospital to see him that's how close she was and the friendship that my dad um i don't know how he did this job too like my brother and i are like running around with our, ch- our, our heads cut off like chickens so i don't know how my dad this is by himself but he just had a way with people uh, he, he, he was just, he was a good soul and he would, his mentality was to give first before anything. Uh, it just, so I just had to, um, I guess it makes me want to be a better person. It makes me want to have more little patience in life and kind of reevaluate my life. And, and I mean, I mean, we learn things every single day as men and women. So I just, this kind of thing makes you want to just grow to be, uh, I mean, I kind of grew up to be a better man, um, yeah, like I said, like my life has just changed immensely uh, in a short time, so I'm just trying to take everything in stride. Uh, my, my new job, too, I, I, I don't want to say where I work. It's just I work 
I, I do. Uh, I work for a company that contracts with the military. I just I, I don't want to put them them out there like that. It's more like have a clearance for it, so it's more confidential. But they've been nothing but supportive and nice. I've never worked for a company that cares about their employees so much. Um, I ask for days off when I just need to take care of business for my dad. There's no questioning. There, there's nothing to it. I tell them like I can bring documentation, I can bring proof, and they're like, "No, don't bring anything. Like you're not gonna lie about your dad passing away. Like we're here for you. If you need anything, let us know. You need more days off." Like my supervisor just told me the other day, like my main boss, he's like, "Hey, hey, when the funeral comes, let me know. If you need more days to, to grieve, let me know, and we'll make it happen." Um, I think I, I struck um, I struck gold with the company I'm working for right now. And what they're showing me makes me want to work even harder, and even more that my dad was really proud of this, of this opportunity and this this career that I landed. So just, yeah, I, 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 I can go on for another hour thanking everyone because I'm not doing this by myself. Uh, I, I everyone's doing it. My, my roommate, my best friend since I was a kid, he always checks up on me. He's always been there. He's always just it's everyone, everyone. I, I can't thank everyone enough. Um, so like I said, I can go on for an hour and stuff, but I, I said, once I'm better and once I can properly grieve and, and go through this, if anyone, which I hope you don't, but it's, it's life, it's, it's going to happen, but if for anything, you guys can always reach out to myself or Mike and we can kind of just kind of guide you or just talk to you or shoot the shit with you about anything. So um, I'm here for you. Um, I'm really glad that I got the strength from you, Mike, to do this show. It was really hard. If you guys didn't hear me, I was choking up a little bit. I even texted Mike. <laughs> it was like fucking hard to to talk, and I almost kind of cut, like cut the show off uh, the first few seconds of talking about my dad. But I'm, it feels good to let it all out and to let uh, you guys know how much uh, I love all your support and thank you for it. Hey, and you already dropped uh, the F-bomb, so you reached your limit, okay? <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, damn, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. No, but I mean, it's good. You know, you, you, that's what you need to do. Sometimes you need to talk, talk it out, you know, and, and go from there. Um, uh, for me, sometimes it was writing things down on paper would help me too. It was just kind of a thing for me. But like, like Eddie said, um, any of you out there ever have in that situation, and I remember a lot of you reached out to me when my mom passed. Uh, more than happy to talk about it and anything. You know, anything you're going through, you know, there's been a lot of stuff uh, happening. So, um, with that, uh, go, you got something? Go ahead, Eddie. Well, I have an article soon about my dad. Uh, I'll, I'll post that. And I was going to ask you, Mike, what's going on with you? <laughs> What's yeah, new with you? I, you know, uh, my life's... Let's, hopefully some positive stuff. Hopefully you won the Powerball <laughs> and you're going to give all the fans a portion of it. Hopefully you got signed for the Ducks. Hey, you know what? Hopefully you got hired as the head coach yeah. of the Ducks. Yeah, yeah, coach yeah. There's, there's some of that stuff that we got to talk about with this team. Uh, some guy named Boudreaux is now available, so we got to talk about him on this show. And there's some other, some other crazy stuff going on that we will cover with the team. But uh, uh, for me... I've just been very, very busy at work, um, which I don't go into because I'm kind of in the same boat as Eddie. There's just stuff that I do, and I, I really keep that separate uh, from this. Uh, and and my, my, my close friends and, and co-workers understand. Uh, sometimes I cross paths. Um, you know, sometimes it works out, and, you know, I get to, to do both at the same time. Um, but um, a lot of work. Uh, it's been good. I've been busy. Um, I, I deal with a lot of people that struggle with mental illness. Uh, I've talked about that before, uh, and I'm doing that right now. And um, no, I mean, I, I've been, you know, good, just just really working a lot. Uh, you know, it was my birthday month came to an end, or our birthday month came to an end. Um, so I just saw family here and there, had a couple, you know, good outings with people. Um, nothing too crazy, but... Uh, that's really the only thing that I did, um, you know, and just, uh, you know, watching the games and whatnot, nothing, nothing too much, just uh, dinner with family and friends here and there. I got a couple more uh, outings planned in, in the month of February as well. So I've been good. I've, I've been mellow, you know, just hanging out. But but like Eddie, I, I've had a handful of other people uh, with similar things just happen. Uh, one I just found out today, uh, sadly. So I've uh, been trying to, you know, talk to a lot of people and just help them all through their situations because I've gone through it too. 
um, just trying trying to to be there for support. That's that's really been the big thing uh, lately, Eddie. But uh, yeah, um, looking forward uh, to this. You know, the Ducks are on a break right now. Uh, we'll kind of we'll, we'll go into the show. The show will be a little bit different, like the last ones. You don't really recap the games. You're just kind of talking about all the controversial stuff going on. Uh, real quick reminder: we are part of the Old City Sports Network, and and that's what our podcast is through. And they've got a lot of sponsors on there. That I put in the comment section. Um, one of the big ones is uh, Norse Beards. If you need something to you know get your hair trimmed up and whatnot, check them out at norsebeards.com. They have a discount. Uh, the code is OCS for uh, 25% off. So just a reminder, we're part of the Old City Sports Network. But uh, yeah, during this break, catching up on things too. I've been doing a lot of cleaning around the house. Ducks haven't played, right? They're, uh, they're, haven't, they're not playing for like a little over a week now, but uh, they've gone on a three-game winning streak. Uh, they beat the Coyotes uh, pretty soundly, five to two. They rallied against your Avalanche, which was was, was a shocker. And Vetrano got a hat trick. That was pretty crazy. Uh, and then they beat Arizona again in a dramatic two to one overtime game with Zegras getting the game winner. So the Ducks, you know, on this three game winning streak, which has been crazy. And I'll just give out some stats and some things going on, and then we'll go into the big topic. But the Ducks on that road trip went three two and one. Uh, you know, their first winning road trip this season. Um, against Arizona, they've had points in, in all six of the last games against them. And Zegers has eight goals and nine assists in his last 15 games. Uh, Klingberg also had two assists in the last game against Arizona, and he's got six points in his last 10 games. So a, a lot of good stuff with the Ducks. And uh, I guess if you're not team tank, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, they're winning. But then uh, a lot of drama with Zegers. A lot of stuff to discuss here. Uh, like I, I don't know, just just crazy stuff, Eddie. Stuff on social media, um, stuff that turns me off. A, a lot of stuff. But, but what did you think about the Ducks so far? How they've been winning, and you know they had that crazy game against the Avalanche. Uh, what are your thoughts? I know you've been really busy, but what are your thoughts on the winning streak and what's kind of going on with the Ducks right now? I had this feeling that Ducks were going to beat the Avalanche. Like like the Avalanche have been. Kind of getting over that Stanley Cup, uh, I guess Stanley Cup hangover and all their injuries, and they've been playing some good hockey. But so, like when they do that, they're playing their best hockey. For some reason, the Ducks are always a thorn in their ass. So it's like, I remember I was uh, talking to some one guy that he does sports betting, and he asked me about this game, and I was like, dude, I'm taking the Ducks. Like, I would take the Ducks to beat Colorado. He's telling me that Colorado's like numbers. I was like, dude, you're looking at numbers from professional sport betters that don't know the game. Like I. I've watched I watched both these teams multiple times. I know how the the Ducks play. I know how the Abs play. I just I just and this feeling too. I get this feeling like Ducks are gonna just whoop their ass. Not whoop their ass, but they're gonna take the win and they're gonna do upset. Oh no! I'll take the safe bet. I was like, no, I'll give you hundred bucks of my own money to bet. Like I I guarantee. Like you no, know, no no no. And guess what? Lo and behold, he should have took that bet. What I'm really uh, kind of getting excited about is the Ducks and Coyotes. They're having some bad blood and creating a big rivalry. You're kind of getting that sense of that like old school hockey mentality. These teams don't like each other, it seems like, at all. And it's not just like this season. I remember going on a road trip and the Ducks had like four fights. And it, just, it seems like these teams just, for some reason, I don't know, maybe the, 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 the I don't know, Coyotes are pissed off playing at a college. <laughs> or maybe they're jealous because they're out at the beach. I don't know what the hell is going on, but it seems like the Ducks... And the Coyotes are being like, they're a bigger rivalry than the Kings and the Ducks. Like, there's no rivalry, it seems like, with Kings and Ducks. It's kind of a mild game. Now the Coyotes and Ducks, it's like, people are going to tune in. People are going to watch. Like, okay, what's going on with these teams? You have Zegers running his mouth the whole time. This is the second time in a row. I mean, he got punched by Nick Ritchie. Uh, no one likes Nick Ritchie, though. Either he's a piece of shit. And I hope he gets his ass kicked next time. Um, but it, it's just it, it's be, it's beginning to see it, it's gonna be good. What it kind of bothered me and when I when I saw this and I watched part of this game, I wasn't having the best of nights as I really like you know your emotions run high uh, when you like when, a situation I'm dealing with. So once I started reading on social media about uh, at first I, I read that Zegra said something about uh, Stetcher's father. I passed away. I was like, "Oh, dude, if, if Zegers did that, like, I I would never be a Zegers fan. I even questioned even being a Ducks fan. I was like, I can't support a team that that has a player like that. 
But then, Mike, you put out a good post and, and you, uh, our group chat, too. You're like, oh, all these lip readers. At first, I thought it was like a, like a whole legit thing. Because, like I said, I wasn't like doing 100%. But then when it came out, he didn't say that. Zegers was just talking shit. And, and people on Twitter, which some people on Twitter could be stupid. They're like professional mouth readers now. And even I spent chicklets. They were talking shit about people on Twitter. I guess Twitter's like a toxic place. It's just people just like to blow these out of proportion. I'm just glad that... Uh, that Zegris didn't think that or didn't say that. And it sucks for me to even insinuate and think for a moment that Zegris would. Because Zegris, yeah, he runs his mouth. He talks a lot of shit. But it's just to say that, it doesn't seem like his character. And then, Mike, I think you have some uh, insight about uh, what he said or what he, he talked about that. And Zegris is really straightforward. So like, if I think if he did have those little wires crossed, that he would admit his like mistake, admit he was wrong. But... It's just, I'm glad that, that that situation didn't happen. It just sucks that I let, I guess, the internet dictate my feelings for a, a few seconds. So it's like, but I, I'm just glad that it was just, it wasn't it. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's Zegers. I don't think he would do that. And Richie's whole thing, like, oh man, it just, that guy is just hates the ducks. He punches Nick Rich or he's uh, Zegers. This is a thing too, Mike. I talk about, we need some kind of, force on our team like, like Nick Ritchie uh, uh, punching Zegris like that he should have got his ass kicked someone should have jumped in and whooped the crap out of him but you, you don't have anyone I don't want Terry going out there and doing that it's just we need someone back <coughs> Deloria <coughs> yeah I mean the thing is is that you had Bo Yu in that game and you had Benoit um, so there were some guys that could have hit him or done some things, and then nothing nothing came of that, really. And that's why I posted that thing, like saying, hey, that's not nice. And him, you know, almost, I, I it was like a punch, but it was almost like a bitch slap. And, like, I mean, you know, Zegers ends up getting the last laugh because he scores the goal, obviously, in overtime. But I was really pissed off when I saw Richie do that. I was like, dude, what, what are you even doing? The play's over, and then you're, like, slapping him in the face. I, I mean... That really irritated me. But I'm with you, too, as far as your feeling. I understand how you felt because I saw some people talking about what was said. Uh, you know, I posted a couple videos of, of the melee on social media. And then, obviously, there are a bunch of other people that post as well. And then, all of a sudden, people are looking at all these videos. And all of a sudden, they're like, something was, because Zegers was pointing upward. They thought he said something about um, Stetcher's dad. And whatnot, and I was like, man, I really hope it's not that, because that that would like kill me. And and then it came out. Um, Craig Morgan, who covers the Coyotes, I, I believe was the first one that said that the Coyotes team said that he didn't say that about his dad. Um, they they said that he did cross the line with quote some very inappropriate comments. I am not even going to go into whatever those could be because I'm not going to feed all this this crazy nonsense on social media. And I, I actually wasn't really on Twitter for a couple of days because uh, I was just over it. I, I was just tired of all all the stuff on there. Like you talked about, Eddie, it, it's a toxic place on Twitter. Um, uh, we you know we've seen a lot of that. we and we've been the target of that too. And I, I don't really care. I don't I don't care anymore what people say. But I just got. As far as towards us, but I just got burnt out on all the stuff that I saw aimed at Zegers on Twitter, and um, I was just like, "Screw this, man! I'm not going to go on here anymore and read this this stuff." Especially once it was cleared that he didn't say anything about his dad. You know what? I'm speculating. This is like you know. I know. You know what? A breaking news. I have a source. My sources <laughs> trust me, dude. Zegers said, "Look up." At least I'm playing in a real stadium. You're playing in a college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. <laughs> no, but you know what? I hate Nick Ritchie. I think he's he's a piece of crap. Uh, he's I told you that story, too. He was in the elevator with Cam Fowler. And uh, I, when I used to work for the Ducks previously, uh, my coworker, she was holding a box. And she walked in there. She had her hands full. So she took the, that elevator. And there was Cam Fowler and Nick Ritchie. And then he mentions that, uh, I guess this is a player's elevator. Take the stairs. And then Cam Fowler goes, like, dude, she ha she's carrying things. Like, she can come in the elevator and let her in the elevator. After that story, I heard, and she's not a liar. She, she was really a, a, a person with integrity. She wouldn't lie. But 
Like, after I heard that story, I was like, you know, Nick Ritchie, I hate that guy. He's just a piece of crap. And to, to even act like that, like, you're a, a tenth overall pick and you're you're barely being a, a, some kind of a, a third line player for the, the, a, co- a college team. Ah, oh, screw that. I hope that guy gets his bow rung sometime. Like, that's a piece of crap. Yeah, and, and there's other stories about him that I've heard that I've been sworn not to repeat and uh, I won't. Obviously, because those people told me stuff, and uh, yeah, uh, R- Richie, it, yeah, he, he. I'll just put it this way: he's not a nice guy, uh, and I'm not going to go into any more of that because you know of what I've been told. But uh, you know, I, I'm just over him. But I'm glad he's not with the Ducks. Ducks don't deserve a player like that. He's just, I don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah, I really, like I said, I hope he gets his bell rung sometime, and I hope someone from the Ducks does it. Our, our Brad Marchand does it. He let uh, our tweet him something. Uh, I don't know. His his tweets are going off the chain. Like it, it makes me think that I want to drink with that. Yeah, guy. he's another one that was on social media going off uh, about all this stuff. It's crazy. I, I just all these people ch- chiming in and all the stuff. It's just it was well, nuts. I think like with Brad Marchand, I think he just does things for for clout. Like he doesn't really think it. He just does it just to get a reaction out of people, and it's like fun for him. Or he gets drunk and just like, come on, we all. People that drink, we all have been drunk. We all text her ex at the wrong time. We all posted something we shouldn't have posted. So it's like I think <laughs> Sean just drinks more. I mean, with the money he has, he probably drinks more than than a lot of us do. And he just posts these. It's funny. It's oh yeah. Uh, another one uh, comment. Our, our sound guy, uh, Braden, uh, he'll listen to this and laugh. He he said this is a joke of what Zegra said, Eddie. He said maybe. He told Stetcher, quote, go eat some Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, Mike? Since it's all like cleared up in the air now and we know he didn't say what he said, uh, you should do a contest. Like, hey, what do you think Zegra said? Post it. And the funniest thing, they, we can, well, they can win something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm down with that. I might, I might do that. We are, oh, by the way, it reminded me. I'm glad you said that. We are giving away a Zegra's bobblehead on Instagram. So go check it out. I think it's been up for a couple days. We'll give it a you know a couple more days. Free shipping worldwide. I don't care. We've got people that listen to the show from Canada, Europe, Australia, Japan. There's been all kinds of crazy other places too. So wherever you're at, I don't really care. We will ship it to whoever's the winner for free. Uh, Zegers Bobblehead. So Instagram, uh, jump on it. It's, it's just ducks and pucks, just like our Twitter and Facebook. So it's on there. But... Some of the things I did want to talk about this situation that I, I don't know if they were brought up or not, but one thing is the way this unfolded. And I, I think people forget about this. And I'm not defending Segrist. I'm not defending Stetcher or whatever. Just talk about what happened. This melee happens. Segrist is being held against the glass by the ref. People are picking up their gear. It looks like it's winding down. Stetcher goes over to Segrist. He says something to Segrist. You can see it gets Zegers pissed off because the part that you can read is Zegers says "fuck you." That there's no de- debating that part. Like you, you can see that clearly. Uh, that part. The rest we can speculate. He he says whatever after that. Stetcher loses his his marbles and and goes nuts. Whatever. Um, but the thing is, Stetcher could have skated back to the bench and, and we wouldn't be talking about this. So he went over there and said something first to Zegers to get Zegers mad to drop the f bomb. And I'm not saying either one's right or wrong. I'm just talking about the facts of exactly what happened in this melee. Sketcher skates away to the bench. This is a non-issue. So, hey, that's one thing. If you're going to go talk trash to somebody and and, and they're going to talk trash back to you, I mean, you have to kind of realize that. Now, I don't know exactly what Zegers said. You know, the Coyotes are saying he still crossed the line, even though he didn't talk about uh, Sketcher's father. Whatever. Um, but, it, it, you know, it's just something to consider, Eddie. I didn't hear anybody really talking about that. I think the only thing I, I probably speculate and think of, like girlfriend, wife kind of thing, but that's 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 something in hockey that like, that's been going on for years. I mean, it's not right. Like I I, I think I mentioned, I want to say, I want to say a, a couple months ago, we we're talking about like suspensions. I got banned from a league because someone called a my buddy's wife a bitch, and I pushed the ref and beat the crap out of him. But I mean, it's 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 hockey. Like that's not right. I'm not defending that. But, I mean, that happens a lot. Uh, the Spit and Chickens podcast, uh, Paul Bissonnette said the same thing, that 
there's a lot of guys that would like mention girlfriends and wives just to try to get under people's skin. And Zegers is the kind of player that gets under people's skin. I'm not saying he said that. I'm just saying that's a possibility, which I think that would be kind of the lowest possibility. I know it's still disrespectful to talk to women about like, like that way, but I mean, he's still young. He still has a lot to learn. I, one thing about Zegers too, um, I do love him. I love the kid. I love his, his personality, but if you're going to keep running your mouth like that, you can't keep running away from fights. You, you have to eventually drop the gloves. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's just it's part of the game. It's just like, you're, you're going to cross that line and someone's just not going to let the refs uh, kind of stand in the way. You don't have, a, a, a I guess, a tough guy to, to have your back. And just, just think of it. You're at a bar and someone's running their mouth. Eventually, you're going to get popped in the face. Uh, and it's not going to not going to be, be well. Uh, maybe take some boxing lessons, UFC fighting. I know a uh, former goalie that we had, Ray Emery, would box every single summer. He'd be training boxing intensively. He he could throw him down. Robert Leonard was another goalie I know that box or does MMA. And there's another player that does MMA too. Um, so it's just you have to if you're gonna run your mouth that much, especially you don't have that much back on this Ducks team, that much like a sandpaper kind of guys. You have to be able to back it up. There's only a long run. You're gonna get your ass kicked. It's, it's not gonna be pretty. But I, I like I like it though. He keeps running his mouth, but I mean, I, uh, eventually you gotta back it up. Um, I guess I'm looking forward to that game in April. Uh, Ducks and Coyotes. Um, maybe a game I, I want to attend in person because, like I said, this this rivalry it keeps going. And you know what's cool? If this hatred keeps going. It bleeds on the next season, and it's just, it's just a big old shit show. Ratings are going to go up. Hey, who knows? We might get a stadium series or a, a winter classic in Arizona <laughs> since the league loves them so much. Like the col- A college winter classic with Coyotes and Ducks? I don't care. I'll take whoever team. <laughs> like, man, if we went to play a, a, a college team. But, yeah, you know, on the silver lining, it's been some entertaining hockey because you can tell these teams hate each other, and I love seeing that. Um, I know people talk about tank, but when it comes to these two teams, I think if they're both dead last and the, I guess the loser will be like finished overall last and it comes down to the last game of the season, these teams aren't going to back down. They want to get those extra points. They want those bragging rights and they want to beat each other because this team, these teams don't like each other for some reason and I'm absolutely loving it. And you know what? F Arizona. Yeah, they, it's the new rivalry now. Like you said, it's like, you know, there's, there's still... Some rivalry with the Sharks and the Kings, obviously, but but as of lately, obviously, of course, going back to the whole Troy Terry thing too. Uh, this last season, obviously, uh, it's just been nasty between these two teams. So I'm really curious to see that game in April and what happens. Um, you know, a lot of stuff going on uh, as far as uh, you know, just the talking and the pushing and the shoving. But another good point you made too is yes, if Zegers is going to run his mouth. He's going to have to, at some point, fight or, or, or drop the gloves. And, you know, a good example of that was Ryan Getzoff. Ryan Getzoff would talk trash all the time. But would he drop the gloves if he had to? Absolutely, he did. And he could fight. He could fight. I, I wouldn't fight Ryan Getzoff. Hey, so that game is Saturday, April 8th in Arizona. Road trip. I, I'm, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I'm going. I'll buy the tickets for you. I'm going. Like tickets for like college, like college. I think I have a, like my college ID still, like ten dollars. <laughs> oh, I I I'll beat this game. For we, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll shave. Make sure we try to get that baby face going, and then we'll see. Oh man, Mike, if you want to do a road trip, I'm so into the yeah, road we'll, trip. We'll, we'll have to look at it. Uh, we do have a location that is closer to that arena, so <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have to look at oh, that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. Uh, that may that may be something in the future. May, we'll, have to, we'll have to see. My schedule's been pretty crazy lately, but we'll have to see. Watch me go there. It's like one nothing uh, <laughs> Ducks loss, and there's no fights or anything. I don't care. It's still fun to have a road trip. But. The only other thing I did want to, well, a couple things I still wanted to cover on this. There's a lot of stuff going on. Is you had people come out and say, like John Scott, who apparently has a podcast. I guess I, I don't know what's called. I, I really don't care, but. Uh, I, I guess him and other people think that the Coyotes were covering up what Zegers said because the, the league told them, you know, to, to say that he didn't say anything about Stetcher's dad, which 
I, I don't I don't buy that. I just don't. I mean, yeah, are there conspiracy theories out there that everyone wants to talk about? Do some of them end up being true? Yeah, sure. But this one, I don't think so. And the reason why is the rest of that game. Seagrass got that penalty in the second period, came back on the ice in the third period. And unless I'm blind or missed something, uh, Stetcher never took a run at him. No other player on the Coyotes took a run at him. So if he you know crossed the line, as the team said... I mean, I thought, I mean, someone would have hit him late or hit him hard or at least skate up to him and told him something. And I didn't really see a whole lot of that going on in the third period. So if it was so bad and so egregious, um, then they would have gone after him. And then maybe that would have made sense that the, the league told Arizona what to say. But hey, if you want to hang your hat on that, um, you know, John Scott, go for that, dude, uh, you know. Good luck with your podcast, dude. You know, whatever. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, ah, I'll just, gladly go on your show uh, and talk about it. Or you know what? You can come on our show. How about that? You can come on our show and, and, and tell us why you think that. I, I just, I'm not buying that. I'm not. And it's because of the reactions on the ice in the third period. If the players were so outraged by what he said, why would they have left him alone in the third period? Especially, as you point out, Eddie, uh, there's not any fight. There's no George Peros on the team. There's no Delorier on the team. There's no one on there that, oh, man, if I go talk to Zegers, I'm going to get my head knocked in. But even then, they still, there was nothing. Nothing. Literally nothing. They just skated back and forth, fought it out, had to go to overtime, and that was it. So, I don't know. That, that's that's probably the last thing I got to say about this this whole craziness um, you know, and, and by the way, too, those of you that are on social media that have been arguing about this and going on and on this for two or three days, you need to get a fucking life. Like, seriously, get a fucking life. Like, it's ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous, dude. Like, I was done, Eddie. I, I'm usually I usually check in on Twitter every day. For about two days, I was like, I'm done, dude. I'm done with these fucking morons on Twitter that are attacking Zegers. Even once this all came out, whatever, because they want to go listen to this Ding Dong John Scott. Uh, you know, and all this other stuff. I, I mean, I just, I'm, I, you know, I'm usually reserved, but I just, I was legit pissed off about this stuff because I just think it's nonsense. And I think this is just an example that people want to use to hate on Zegris. But this is another example of, hey, if he was on my team, oh, I would love him. I'd love to have Zegris on my team. But, hey, he's on the Ducks, F the Ducks, F Zegris. Oh, he, he probably said this, that, or whatever. Like, shut up. Go home. It's obviously not what he said. That's what the team Arizona said. They didn't go after him afterwards. So yes, did he trash talk? Was it probably inappropriate? Yeah, it probably was. But it wasn't as bad as what they said. So that's it. And if you want to live on Twitter for you know non like this nonsense for two or three days, dude. Like I I don't know what to tell you. You you got issues, man. I love the passion. I love it. Only thing I had an issue with, you used two F-bombs. So I can use <laughs> one more. Uh, uh, I, well, one of our sponsors, Jesse Bell. <laughs> I hope you heard the show. I hope you don't get mad. You know what, too? I forgot to shout out Jesse. Uh, Jesse was cool. Uh, I got a message from him. Uh, he's one of our big sponsors. and he, he's Yeah, he's from Old City Sports Network, and it's, it's awesome. Jesse, uh, thank you for your response. I responded, too, but... I just want to give you that that personal shout out. That meant a lot. Like like we don't talk a lot, and we don't text a lot. But just getting that random message from you uh, with your condolences that was that was pretty awesome. So thank you. But Mike, holy crap, you're buzzing on that. You just went off, and it's awesome. And John Scott, I think John Scott's a joke. This guy thinks the league liked him. He got voted in for the All Star game as a joke because. People were bored, and it just proves how much of a joke the All-Star game is. So fans were just voting the worst player in the league at that time. And the league had to uh, trade him just to try to, like, kind of fix that, that league vote. And so now he thinks everything's a big conspiracy. It's like, come on, bro. I was like, you you can't even get your own freaking podcast music correct. Like, you want to talk that, that, that kind of crap, dude? I'm not going to talk shit to you to your face because you... you you could probably kick my ass, but I mean, I mean, I, I still would. And I'll swing a few times if I'll lose, but like, come on, bro. You you want your little like clout? You want your little fifteen minutes of fame for a trending story? I get it. It's not gonna happen. It's just what's done is done. The facts came out from the team, from an analyst. It's just it, 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 Stetcher said it too. It's just it was he said something inappropriate, and we'll leave it at that. It's probably. 
about a girlfriend. It's pre- who knows. He made a college comment that, that that the team doesn't want him to talk about. It's just it's hockey. Like people talk crap. You play a, a sport that that's what ha- any sport you play. I mean, Batman. I, I like. I want to transition like to, to Batman and play that. I'm pretty sure when I'm hitting the the the, the shuttlecock to someone, they're going to talk shit to me. I don't know. Like I played the like, tennis in middle school for PE, and I got someone talking crap to me. Like <laughs> it's happened. It's, it's part of the game. Yeah. I think people dwelling on this, like you said on Twitter, you have nothing better to do. Um, I wish I had your life. I I, I wish I had. That much time and that much nothing going on in my life to, to dwell on that. Um, I'm working. I worked the last 12, 13 days now in a row, putting so many hours in. But I, I wish I could, I could get that kind of time. But hey, to each his own. Whatever makes you happy, I'm fine with. But just don't be trashing someone when you know the facts. The facts are out there. Uh, uh, you shouldn't have to be bashing this kid he's still a kid by the way guys he's still a kid so i really hope you know that so i hope this uh i hope the situation is done in a week which i i'm sure it is um i'm sure our next controversy thing is going to happen which it already did with a trade we'll talk about later in the show but i mean it, it's done and we'll see you guys in april with the coyotes and i hope nick Ritchie. i don't know you hope you trip on the ice and crack your ankle or i don't know or you, you're too fat to putting your skates I, I i don't know and i, I, I yeah I, I talked about maroon and that comment but richie's an a- a-hole and what he like made the, I don't know, that comment to the my female employee uh, about her taking the stairs holding heavy boxes uh, it's just it's just crazy but shout out to cam fowler he was a gentleman and he he told her to come in the elevator and that was cool so cam you're the best next captain the best. <laughs> Uh, and one thing too, uh, Zegers did talk uh, about this to Lisa Doman of um, the Orange County Register. In the article, he was asked, you know, uh, like why why was that all mad? What it, what happened? So Zegers he said, "quote I'm not sure. It was pretty standard trash talk. If he wants to act like that, it's totally fine." Uh, assuming he's referring to the reaction that he had, whatever. Um, which, like you said, I, it leads me to believe it's something about a girlfriend or a wife or something like that. Again, not that that's right or whatever. I don't know, but. Sounds like maybe it's something like that. So that's what he said. Uh, and I thought another thing, that, just to kind of wrap this up, that was interesting, was on Bally Sports, they talked about Zegris not being on Twitter anymore. So he actually deleted the app off his phone. Uh, his account is still up, but uh, he deleted it. I, you know, He may go back on later. I don't know. But as of now, he's, he's not on there. He is on Instagram. He's posting stuff on there. So I see him on there. But... Uh, he's off Twitter, so uh, I don't blame him. <laughs> if I was a player, uh, a current player, I wouldn't be on Twitter either to deal with this nonsense. But uh, that that's where we're at. So, you know, April comes around. We'll see what happens. Maybe Eddie and I will take a road trip and we'll take our college IDs and, um, you know, get in the student section and <laughs> see this battle. So fun times um, going on with this whole thing. But uh, that's where we're at. Uh Real quick, Eddie did mention Jesse. You know, we are part of the Old City Sports Network. Check out all the uh, different sponsors we have in the description box. Another one is Fanatics. Uh, you go in there and get good discounts on Duck stuff too. The link is in um, the description, so as well as a bunch of other sponsors. So, all right, with that, a couple other things that have come up with the Ducks. Uh, you know, indirectly, I guess uh, we had Boost Boudreau got let go by the Canucks. Uh, and we'll also talk about the Canucks made a trade. So a couple, couple little things there, and then we got the All Star game to kind of kind of wrap up the show here. But uh, I put out a poll a little while back asking people about Boost Brudro. Would you want him back as the coach? What people you know thought about that? Uh, it was about 60-40 in favor of him bringing uh, you know bringing him back. Uh, uh, first off, I think the way Vancouver went about this was horrible. It was like he pretty much knew he was already getting fired, but then they still had him coach, you know, one, one more game and then let him go. I, like, I don't understand what's going on in Vancouver with that. But he got let go. A majority of you, not a big majority, but a, enough think that they should bring him back. But a lot of you felt no. Uh, you felt like he would help in the regular season, uh, but not in the playoffs. Those were some of the comments you made. Some of the other comments that you had were not this season, maybe next season, right? If Dallas Aikens is let go in the in the summertime, 
Uh, those were a few of the other comments I got. But uh, what did you think about this, Eddie? You know, uh, how do you feel on the whole situation, and and what are your thoughts on you know the Ducks trying to you know bring him back this season, next season, or if ever? Uh, pass. I I love him. He's, he has a great personality. He's a good players coach. He's a big movie buff. So it's like I love the guy. I would love to have a few drinks with him and just watch some movies and chill, but he, you're done for a reason. You can't keep moving. You can't, I guess you can't keep trying to step backwards on a forward treadmill and you can't keep going back to your ex-girlfriend. It's not going to work. Like I'm going to talk lower because my, my best friend's upstairs, but it's like he keeps trying to go back to his ex-girlfriend after years and it's the same bull crap. It's not going to work. You guys break up for a reason. Uh, you let go of someone for a reason. If you want to move forward and elevate what you want in a team and an organization, you can't keep making steps back. You have to. You have to be someone new. Boost Boudreau would be a. I would love him as a kind of a players coach, a, a, some kind of role with the Ducks. But the next Ducks head coach has to be in the vision of our GM. Has to have the vision of our players. And has to elevate everything and change the way the Ducks played. I want more of a hard nosed coach. I want more of a, I want a utility coach. I guess I want him to have all those factors in him. You just can't have one coach that just wants to run and gun and hit everything. We had coaches like that. You can't have a coach that just wants pure offense or dump and chase, which you know what I'm talking about. We have to have a balance if we have to. We had to look at teams like the Colorado Avalanche. We had to look at teams at like Tampa Bay Lightning, Boston Bruins right now. Uh, last year, the Florida Panthers. We have to build teams like that and get coaches that can be universal and kind of adapt to change and, and change their coaching. St- like Whatever personality they have as a coach, uh, just change it uh, abruptly and, and, and go forward from there. You have to keep – you have to keep – Everything just different, and you have to be the best person you can. Bruce Boudreaux, I think he's a great person. He was a great coach, and I, I love him. I respect everything he's done for the Ducks organization and, and what he's he brought to them. But it wasn't success, and this is a business. This is the organization, and as much as I love, I, I can have emotions to players and, and coaches. It's a business, and I want to win. I mean, the the business that everyone works, no matter what you do, it's just, if you're not performing, if you're not providing, you're going to be let go. And it's just, no, we have to keep moving forward. Uh, I, I really trust our GM to hire someone in his image that can build something and hopefully a dynasty. We could be talking about the Ducks like as if they're, they're Tampa Bay winning the Cups back to back. When uh, talking about the like how the Boston Bruins are just being electric right now uh talk oh you know a good example the the buffalo freaking sabers oh my god they're i think what they're number one in goals scored this season and i watched a few of their games and that team is just from being a bottom barrel team and they were supposed to be a bottom barrel team they're just something there's there's magic in that team and i wouldn't be surprised if they make the playoffs and they just i, I don't know if it if I go to Vegas, which I'm planning to, once a uh, once a funeral and everything happens, I will bet money uh, at least a hundred, two hundred bucks on Buffalo at least getting to the 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 Stanley Cup final, if not winning the Stanley Cup. There's a certain magic like magic they have with them and a swagger they have, and I I can see that the Ducks having that pretty soon. But yet to hire the right coach, stepping backwards is not going to do the thing. It's funny. I uh, I asked uh, Tamu about that. I said, well, "What do you think?" You know, because a lot of people were, you know, they <laughs> they remember when uh, you know certain players had you know certain comments about certain coaches, right? Which I'm not going to go too much into that. But uh, he said the same thing that you did in a lot less words. But he said that you know you got to get a new blood in there as a coach. Don't go back to the same. Um, like you talked about, Eddie, we saw the whole thing with Carlisle bringing him back. That didn't work out with, with Boudreaux. I think it's the same thing. I think you, like you, you said, you hit the nail on the head. You got to get somebody in there that is gonna, uh, you know, turn the team around. As you talk about, turn them into a contender every year. 
get on page with Verbeek and, and the plan and everything to go forward. So, I mean, if, if that's still Dallas and that's that's what he thinks, I, I, I mean, it might be. But um, if you're if you're not and you're going to bring in someone else, uh, you, you you know you don't bring in a repeat. You don't bring in the the, the X again like you talked about. So. Uh, for me, it's a no as well. Um, you know, I, I just don't think that that's going to be the answer. And, and I don't think, you know, anything during the season is going to be answered. And I know a lot of people don't like that or whatever, but I, you bring them in and wh- why are you going to try and turn around the season right now? We're already in the bottom. We're looking at getting a top pick. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me uh, at this point, Eddie. No, no, hell no. I mean, if he, like reality really hasn't hit, the Ducks aren't going to, like automatically just turn it around and be a contending team and Cinderella team and win the cup. No, Ducks are done. Uh, if you can't see that, then I, I, I don't know. Maybe we gotta yeah send you to therapy or something. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's just we have to accept reality. And right now, what I want from Ducks, and I keep saying this over and over, Mike, you can go back. Uh, we can have our producer go back. And how many like times I mentioned this. I want the Ducks to improve. I want the players to improve. I want Terry and Zegers to just elevate their games. I want to find our identity, and this is the best way to do it. When you're at the bottom, you rely on each other. You're dead last and stuff. It's just, You're going to find out how to tweak your game. You're going to try things different to, to change your game and, and go from there. I mean, Next season, I don't think the Ducks are going to be poised to to make a big playoff run, but I think next season is going to be different. They're going to have more of a swagger. Or who knows, they might surprise everyone like Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo Sabres were supposed to be just the bottom of the barrel. And uh, you know what? They got those those sexy jerseys. Maybe that that's the whole thing. They got their swagger up. So maybe we have to bring the Mighty Ducks logo back. And, and that's going <laughs> to get the Ducks over there. But no, it's just <coughs> uh, looking forward. We have to hire the right coach. We have to, this game's changed a lot, so we have to hire like a balance, uh, we have to have a, a player's coach, someone that's patient, um, that can deal with it. Uh, Zegris, I don't know if Zegris retired to be a coach, that'd be funny. Hey dude, go to the next line, dude, dude, do this. Hey, hey ref, hey come here, dude. <laughs> Wrong call, no. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough for a while, but we just had to deal with it. Uh, the Ducks have played the last few games, some fun hockey, we saw potential. They, they beat a, a thriving Avalanche team. They look really good. But Toronto, like he, the little hattie he had, it's just, you can see glimpses of that swagger and what they can become. We have to be patient. We can't kind of rush it. And we can't, like, this season's not salvageable at all, so we can't act like it is. So um, I'm glad that we have the coach that we have that, that understands his situation. And I think he's one of those, just like Boudreaux, like, he knows he's not coming back for next season. I mean, Vancouver was kind of, they kind of mishandled him and the way they did. Like, hey, you're going to be fired tomorrow, but you so coach. Like, or whatever the hell they did. Uh, the fans got pissed off at the team for doing that. And then he was a love coach, too. I was reading, too, that players were, like, giving him hugs and crying when he was, uh, his, I guess, his whole exit thing. So, I was going to be patient. We're going to hire the best coach and... And we have to go from there, but it's not going to be a coach that we went backwards, like right? backwards from. Like, do you want to like have Randy Carlo back? Like, I mean, come on, guys. Hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe Tortorella can come to the Ducks and piss everybody off. Oh yeah, we we got a little bit to talk about him too in a minute, but uh, yeah, oh boy, uh, he's in a little situation as well in Philly, and we'll we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit, but. Uh, one other part of that you mentioned is about finding their identity and getting their swagger. And, and, you know, another bright spot for the Ducks this season has been Troy Terry. He did make the All-Star uh, game uh, again, or the All-Star team. Um, you know, 13 goals, 29 assists. I don't know if he's going to get as many goals as he did last year. He sh- you know, ho- hopefully he should get in the mid-20s this year. Um you know, I'm not a big fan of the All-Star game and the way that they do it. A, a lot of that's not not a big thing. Uh, Eddie and I have talked about that before. I mean, I'll probably still tune in as I usually do, but uh, you know, Zegras wasn't there uh, even for any of the stuff. And then it was kind of interesting. They had the skills competition, and Troy Terry got left out of that. So I, I didn't think that that was very cool. But hey, he got to do the dunk tank. So I joked about that on Twitter, where that that was his skills competition for you know this this weekend. I, I guess with Wild Wing. I mean, I don't know. I just that's kind of frustrating to me. I think. If you have skills competitions, you have all these players. They should all, 
you know, be part of it in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, not not really happy about that. And then their jerseys. I know a lot of people. They're like it's supposed to be like like a hint of Miami Vice to it or whatever. I don't know. A lot of people are like they like these jerseys. I I didn't. I think they were god awful. Uh, to be honest, uh, we, our buddy, the Mighty Jerseys, asked us, you know, if we'd get a, a Troy Terry All Star jersey. I'm not getting any jerseys uh, of this. I just, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan. Just being real, I, I just don't. I think those those jerseys are trash. I just don't think that they're that great. I mean, they're okay, you know, but whatever. I, I just, I don't know. I wasn't really that excited about them. I, I like the the one that a lot of people hated is I like the black with the the white and the white ducks logo because it was different. I thought that one was really cool, and I st- still wear that one to the games and stuff, but. A lot of people hated those jerseys. So, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. I, I don't know. I just looked at those jerseys and I was like, nah, I'm good. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I just wasn't wasn't really a big fan. I mean, it's cool that they're going to Florida and they're trying to do that hint of that. But I don't know. It, it, I don't know. T- to my eye, when I look at it, I'm just like, eh, nah, I'm good. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That's just my take. I know a lot of people out there are like, oh, my God, these jerseys are fantastic. I mean, good for you if you, if you think they're that great. I, I really don't. Uh, maybe I'll change my mind when they're on the ice wearing them. But... I really don't doubt it. So, uh, but again, I'm not a big All Star uh, fan. Um, at least the way that the NHL handles it, I, I just don't. I don't know. I've never really been a big fan of it. And I think that uh, Terry getting snubbed out of the uh, skills competition is lame. I, I just think that's that's really annoying. So, but that's my two cents, Eddie. I think like the one All Star game I enjoy when they they're able to like pick their own teams and the like, last pick like pick a car for charity or whatever. I think the All Star Game, the way the NHL has it's a it's a big joke. It's just it's the dumbest thing ever, and it's just it's a waste of time. Just just get on with the season. I'm sure a lot of players will fake an injury just to get out of it, and it sucks if a player doesn't want to go. They they can't play the next game. I think it's time to move on for the commissioner we have. This league could be something different. The way he's been running it, it's just. He's running it like basketball and football, and that's not what fans want. Fans love this sport, and they pride themselves on being away from basketball and football and base. They don't, they don't, kind of like go down to what basketball and football and baseball do. I think the best like All Star game I watched recently was when they had the women's three on three. That was some fun hockey to watch, and that's when I tuned in. And it's just, I don't know. The rest of the All Star game, I'll pass on that. I rather, I don't know. I rather watch paint dry, or I rather, I don't know what I rather do. I rather be keep working these freaking twelve days in a row than than watch a hockey game or watch the All Star game. Someone told me, hey, you can have some days off to watch to watch the All Star game. No, I'll, just, I'll, I'll keep working. I'll, I'll keep making money instead of just sitting here trying to drink until I uh, I get entertained by myself or. Or whatever's going on on the screen in front yeah, of me. Yeah, I'm with you. But it's there. I'll watch it, you know, for a little bit or whatever. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm happy Terry made it. That's great. Uh, I, I, you know, he deserves it. But being left out of skills competition is kind of annoying. So, But we got some other stuff, too, as well going on. More stuff that people are talking about. You know, kind of wind up the show with our, our league news um, section here. A couple things that have gone on that... Uh, uh, you know, just more. It's it's been a, it's been an interesting couple couple weeks here of stuff going on. But uh, a lot of people wanting trades, trade deadlines coming up. Finally, you you have a, a trade with the the Canucks and the Islanders. They pull the trigger. Bor uh, Horvat is traded. There was a lot of you know rumor about him going to different teams. They send him to the Islanders, which he's still going to be. This is what's funny about the All-Star game. He's still going to be under the Pacific Division team, but he's going to be wearing an Islanders jersey. So go figure. Because, uh, you know, they didn't anticipate this trade, obviously, you know, after uh, the teams are all set or whatever. But that's kind of weird. I don't know if that's ever happened before. But that's what's going to happen. Um, and, you know, a lot of people thought this trade was very lopsided uh, or they just weren't really sure what was going on with this trade because uh, Horvat went to the Islanders. And then Vancouver got uh, Anthony uh, Bovelier, Bol- and then uh, Atu Ratu, and then a conditional first round pick for 2023. Um, so you know they they got a decent return out of him. Uh, Horvat has got you know 31 um, goals this season. Uh, he's he's in you know he's been doing well, but he's he's a UFA. At the end of the season, uh, 5.5 million. Um, 
uh, is the uh, salary that he's got. So you know, there's some some people are feeling well. Okay, you know, yeah, he's doing real well, but then you have the salary and his UFA. You know, the Islanders are going to resign him, and, and then they get you know these other guys. Achiratu, okay, you know, he got a, a goal in his first game, very cheap. You know, not even a million dollar contract RFA for a couple more seasons. Bavalier, four million. Uh, another season. He's got nine goals in 49 games. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't really think that this... I don't know. A, a lot of people thought that this trade was very lopsided. They weren't understanding what was going on. I don't know. I don't think it was that bad. But I, I do think Vancouver uh, you know, kind of kind of made out, I guess, because of what they got in return. Um, if if the Islanders don't sign Horvat, you know, longer, I mean that it's it's kind of a steep price for a rental, um, in my opinion. It, it seems it seems a little high, but I don't know. Vancouver's trying to dump everything, including their coach. So I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to trying to get uh, stuff for him, and and that's why they ended up doing that. And the Islanders are like, well, we'll just take him and try and make a run at it. I, you know, I don't know. It, it, to me, I think if they don't sign him. For more, I mean, I don't know. It just it seems a little bit steep on the Islanders' end, in my opinion, Eddie. But I don't think it's like super lopsided. Ah, uh, it's it, it's gonna be a shit show if uh, they don't make the playoffs. They don't re-sign him, and they're not gonna do any contract negotiations right now. There wasn't anything in place. Uh, if they re-sign him, then yeah, he's having a monster season. So he's gonna command a lot of money. He's having a great season. Um. The anti Ratu, whatever, I, I was reading that he was supposed to go project to be first overall or kind of a top draft pick, but he had an attitude problem, so he dropped a lot. And that conditional pick is like, I want to say top 12 protected. It's, if this doesn't pan out, if the Islanders don't uh, re-sign him or make the playoffs or if they miss the playoffs, don't re-sign him. I, this, this city, they're going to riot. And New Yorkers are, they're kind of crazy people. So Lou better have his, uh, I don't know, his gates up. It's just, it's just kind of weird. And you know what? I was reading too that Boston, um, they, they were interested in him, but they weren't going to pay the price that, uh, that I guess that Islanders paid. There's still a lot of potential. Boy, how do you pronounce his name? Ball I'm sorry. I just, yeah. He still has some term left. He still, I think he'd be a top six player. I think he is a top six player. They can flip him for assets and still uh, get some more for him. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, I'm still kind of weary about this trade. If they don't re-sign him, it's expensive to pay for rental. I can't see them re-signing uh, Horvat. I see him testing free agency market. And I mentioned him too. I, I think he'd be a good replacement, uh, you know, as a second line center for the Ducks. If the Ducks were in that position to, to be a contending team, but it, it, it's gonna have to. There's no wait and see. Like someone's gonna be pissed off. Someone's not gonna be. Uh, it's a lot to give up. the The Vancouver Canucks they have these players coming to Vancouver, which their fan bases are really passionate and they can turn on you real quick, like any uh, like Canadian team. Not talking crap about any Canadians. They're just really passionate. and They love their hockey. Just like over here, people love their football and baseball. They'll turn on you quick. So it's, it's going to be tough to see. If they can't re-sign him then, or, or even make the playoffs, that's going to be a big crap show. Uh, the All-Star game, like I said, it's, big, it's a joke. He, well, he's still going to represent Vancouver too, but it, 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 like you said, it's, oh man, they need to get their crap together. They have to figure it out. There's players that should, that, that – we're, we're on the roster that shouldn't be. Seth Jones, I'm sorry, you should not not have been an all-star in Chicago. Like, it's like at participation trophies. Uh, Tate Thompson, uh, you know, has been just a superstar for and one of their best players in the Buffalo Sabres got hurt. He's going to be replaced by uh, Rasmus Dahlin. He should have been in there and not been replaced. He should have been in there way before Seth Jones. It's not an all-star game for having everyone just... Like, like whole participation trophy. I mean, one season you didn't even have. You only had Wild Wing as your only representative for the Ducks. So I don't know. I'm all with the moving forward in the future to get away with this All Star game, but this league is changing, and it's just getting harder and harder to watch. Mike, like the way everything's going. I think some of the funnest games I've watched were the Ducks and and Coyotes, 
and that like old school rivalry back, but this league is just getting watered down, and Bettman's just he's too focused on trying to chase basketball and football and be them. You know what? Soon you're gonna have players, uh, hockey players like LeBron, that it's too cold in the ice and they don't want to play. Like even when I watched that Boston Celtics game against the Lakers, I know like, and, and I agree, LeBron was fouled, and that crap was bad. But LeBron flopping and crying like the like a baby back bitch as big as he is, that's just terrible. Like how can he be a man and cry that much? But this league is just it's just going down. I, I hope he just retires and brings someone in that's gonna lift us up and and bring the fans. If not, then we're just gonna. Have the league just be like soccer one day. It's it's gonna be bad, but I think the All Star Game and and what choices they make, especially Horvath's gonna re- represent Mac River Canucks still. Ah, well, yeah. On. Well, the thing is, he's gonna represent the Islanders, but he's gonna be in the Pacific Division. That's what's confusing. Like, well, but yeah, right. because it's still it's, well, it's, it's weird. It's, yeah, it's still right. Yeah, Vancouver. it's it's like what I, I don't understand. It's like. Exactly, it's confusing. It doesn't make sense. Like when that happened, when the trade happened, I actually thought, man, they should get Segris in there in the Pacific Division and let Horvath go over to the East. I, I actually kind of thought that, and I was like, nah, they're not gonna do it. <laughs> I thought that would have been a twist. Yeah, but it's like, like that one year that we had nowhere, like we we had Wild Wing, yeah, like no I representatives. Know. Like screw the Ducks, right? Like yeah. shit. And then Terry, the, the whole skill, like, oh, come on. Like, forget about it. Like, yeah. So, if I were Terry, I'd be like, you know what, screw you guys. I'm not going to show up. I'm going to spend time, in, in, you know, doing my thing. I'll take the one-game suspension. It doesn't really matter. I hope Terry does that. I hope he's just <laughs> like, you know, F it. I'm not going. Or, right, you know what? Terry was walking. He, he twisted his ankle. He's no, no, hurt. no. He got hurt on the dunk tank. There you go. There you go. There we go. No, no, I don't even <laughs> want like no, I don't even want Terry that dunk tank. Like that's a that clown crap. That's I so know that, stupid. that's why I posted the tweet, kind of poking fun at it without getting too crazy. I was just like, this is dumb, dude. But uh, anyways, yeah. So so you got that to watch. You know, like I said, I'll, I'll still check it out a little bit. But um, the last the last little bit, some more stuff. Man, I, I don't know. It's been just a weird couple weeks, but. Um, and it was funny. I didn't really uh, hit up Jesse about this, but uh, his team is the Flyers. You know that other orange team, and their coach is Torts, and they had some issues. <laughs> uh, so they had a Pride Night, and they had rainbow uh, themed jerseys for the warm up. And it was funny because everybody, you know, kind of went out of the ice. They did their thing. They played the game, and then at the very end. I forgot who it was. Someone's like, hey, Ivan Provorov wasn't out there in the pregame warm-up, but he was on there for the game. And then it was, he didn't wear the jersey. And then that just like blew up, turned into a big thing. Everybody's going nuts on this. And and I just, I don't know. The, just like with the Zegers thing, I just like, I just, I don't know. I, I hate social media sometimes. Everyone was going nuts. Um, they talked to Torts. And they asked him about it, and he said, "Hey, you know, Provy as they as they call him is Nick Dame. He said, "Hey, he's you know true to himself and and what he believes in. Uh, he, you know, he didn't want to wear it, so he didn't. Um, and then he didn't really comment much on it. it was just kind of like, hey, you can ask him about it. The the team put out a statement. They interviewed him, and he just said, "Hey, you know, this is my religion, and it goes against my religion, so I didn't want to wear it. And I, I don't know. To me, I, I don't really think it was that huge of a deal." But I see these people having meltdowns, especially on Twitter, again, sadly, uh, about this. And, you know, it was a team decision. They talked about it. So, I mean, they didn't have an issue. I mean, he said he didn't want to go out there and do it. Everyone was like, that's fine. They all went out and did what they did. I, like, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, the team did what they did, and that's it. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I just I didn't find it that huge of a, a of a big controversy, but this this like the Zegers thing blew up on social media for several days. Everybody was like you know, getting mad. All these NHL and hockey media people blowing Provy up, saying nasty stuff, and uh, it's just like okay, well, I mean, he made a choice, and the team honored his choice, so I, we we can't make choices anymore. I I, I don't understand like. I don't know. That that's what it is to me. I don't. 
I don't know. I, I just, you know, I just thought it was interesting. Like, what did what did you think about this whole thing, Eddie? As far as you know, he didn't go out there for warmups, uh, but then he got to play the game. Do you think he shouldn't have played the whole game, or what, what do you think? Well, the whole thing, Mike. Uh, I have uh, Jesse right now. I just called him uh, from Old City, uh, Old City Sports Network, our sponsor. Uh, he's a Flyers fan, and we're talking about uh, Provolov's, uh, I guess, his decision not to wear the, the jersey that, that caused a whole like tro- a controversy for the whole league. So uh, as a Flyers representative, let's hear what he has to say. He's on speaker, and go ahead and, and say what you have to say, Jesse. So what's going on, guys? Hey. Um, yeah, so um, I actually haven't really touched on it too much uh, because it's kind of uh, – Kind of a touchy subject, but I'll, I'll do you guys kind of uh, uh inside thing here. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't uh being in the media, I don't really um it's 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 not in my personal opinion uh, the thing with pro overall. You kind of at this point in time, you can't leave out the fact that the Rangers kind of just did what they just did too. Right. So um. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but, um, yeah, they kind of didn't do it either. They canceled the whole thing, and the entire team didn't even wear the jerseys. They didn't even bring them into the locker room. But um, that being said, it, 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 it's not really my business. Um, and be like I said earlier, being uh, credentialed in the media with the Flyers, I, I kind of don't think it's any of their business either. Yep. And it's kind of a double-edged sword situation. Uh, if if you want, you're kind of taking the dudes right away from kind of deciding what he wants to do on a constant basis. I don't think it's set on his contract that he has to, you know, kind of do these things. And uh, I think he's still allowed to have his right to do it. But at the same time, on the other side, you really could have just put the jersey on. Um, in, in a kind of uh, unorthodox kind of way, maybe a little controversial way. Um, you know, I know people, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from right outside of Philadelphia. So, you know, the players do make their way, uh, you know, into the suburbs. I know that Provorov doesn't seem to have a problem with, you know, kind of going against his religion a little bit when it comes to uh, dating. Uh, so it's kind of like it's kind of a double-edged sword situation like I said like I feel like at, at some sort of time he's bending the rules for his own benefit but he does have the right to do what he wants so um, yeah it's kind of kind of what I've actually said more to you guys than I have said on either one of my shows about it but um, yeah it's kind of where I stand on it it's kind of no, no one's business but at the same time like he's kind of making it people's business so it's kind of a uh, it's a black hole subject. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for coming on, uh, giving us that insight from the Flyers. I know it's a touchy subject, and I agree with everything you said. It's just like we we we, we all have our personal beliefs, but you can't just bend and choose. And uh, yeah, it, I respect him for having his beliefs and him not, uh, choosing not to do that. But also, I have that flip side. It's like a team sport. I mean, I've been I, I played hockey all my life. I, I played on, on teams too, where I did things. And supported things I didn't want to do, which is like I want to do it for the team. But and and the Rangers did the same thing. But yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Jesse. Um, I'll try to text Mike too when I, I text you actually to see if he wanted you to come on. So Mike was surprised, but it's like I'm glad that you jumped on and gave us that Flyers insight. And like I told you, um, I gave you a shout out on the show, and I'll tell you this right now on the show. Thank you again for uh, you reaching out. Your prayers too. That meant a lot. Just uh, seeing you, uh, your text. I mean, uh, um, I, I know Mike is your point of contact. We don't talk a lot, but it, it was really nice to see your uh, your text and stuff like that. And thank you for just jumping on, randomly on the show, and giving uh, your input and I guess giving your uh, your first input uh, on the Ducks and Puck show over here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I appreciate you guys having me come on. And uh, we have to bring yeah, you on sometime. Yeah. We have to all or, or just just do a show together, especially trade deadline. We should all just link up and do a show and and work something from there yeah we got uh we got center ice rolling pretty pretty heavily now so yeah we're definitely looking for 
awesome West Coast uh, insight since, you know, all us us goons over here from like Chicago, <laughs> Philly, and New York. Nice. So let's get some actual brains on our show for once. Hell yeah. So I want to thank uh, Jesse from Old City Sports Network. He's one of our biggest sponsors from Ducks and the Pucks. Uh, we always talk about him. So uh, thank you, Jesse, for being on the show. And hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be on a different show soon, maybe a YouTube live show. And hopefully a uh, trade deadline. We'll all shoot the shit. We'll all get drunk together on the podcast and talk some hockey. I ain't talking my business. I'll talk to you guys then. Keep it, keep it real, guys. For real, man. Thank you. Yep. That was a surprise. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Mike? I was trying to text you. Uh, if I should like, call him and ask him to be on the show get his input since you mentioned it I yeah. texted him accidentally so I was like you know what I'm going to run with it Just this is <laughs> spontaneous but it was good I like I love his insight I love the fact that he hasn't talked about it on his own personal shows but he chose to talk about that on this show and his response was really great it was the best response you can and I agree with him it's just like I have my personal beliefs and I have no like issue with anyone and their sexual orientation at all. I have cousins that are gay. I had one that wrote me just recently while we we're talking on this show about uh, this new truck I have. I, I I don't care, but I care about people's own decisions and choice. I mean, would I have done it? No, I'm more of a team player, and I'll go with the team. Obviously, if you're like worshiping Satan or or sacrificing like, like animals, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run with that, but. I think the whole thing was Twitter is blowing it up more than it should be. It's just let the player just do his own thing. Let these teams do their own thing, and, and that's it. Like, stop making hockey like its whole like whole like publicity thing, and stop making it like its whole. I guess trying to appease the world's problems. No, let's just play the damn sport. We'll do the game. We'll honor the special nights we have. Women's sports night was a big success. Military night. Uh, yeah, the, I, I believe it's called Gay Pride Night. Now I apologize if I'm I've seen the wrong terminology. I just been I haven't been into hockey the last few weeks because of my situation. I get those theme nights, but if a player doesn't want to support that, that's their that's their prerogative, and they can do that. And I, I wish teams and I wish fans would support that too. And you know what? I, I was in, I, I served in the army too. If if a certain player doesn't believe in the military or anything like that, and they choose to sit out. I'll respect that. Like, uh, yeah, it's just, it's kind of, kind of, they sting a little bit because, like, I have that army ties, but you know what? You're a hockey player, you're a professional athlete, and I respect what you do. And I respect your decision and freedom to do that. Uh, it's just, that's what it is. And I wish everyone can just have that same mentality. And no matter what you feel and what your belief is, just respect people at their decisions and just go from there. And let's not forget the main focus is hockey. Yeah, I think you said it very well. You know, the main thing is definitely hockey, like you said. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, it is kind of a black hole thing, like Jesse said, too. I mean, the thing here is, did, if the team got together and made this decision, right, and he said, I wasn't going to wear it, and I wasn't going to be out there for warm-ups, and... That well, that's what they all agreed upon. Then that's what they agreed upon. Like I mean, I, I'm not really. That's why to me it wasn't really that big of a deal one way or another. Um, having said that, I'm with you, Eddie. If I'm on a team and we're all going to wear a certain jersey uh, at a pregame skate, <clears throat> regardless what it is, as long as it's something that's not you know immoral or illegal, right? Or, or like we we're talking about. Um, I would just wear the jersey and do the thing and whatever. I, I have family that are LGBTQ. I have friends that are that way. And I don't, it's not, it's like, it's a non-issue. Like, we don't, like, talk about it. It's not a big deal. Like, okay, cool. Like, I, I don't know. I just think that they, the it, this just got blown up in the media, caused a big storm, and it, it, it didn't need to be. I, I just, I don't know. I, I just thought it got blown out of proportion. And I think that, uh, Jesse's right. Yeah, he didn't really talk about it in any of his shows uh, in our group chat. I was surprised. I was waiting to see if he would say something. I, I didn't want to throw it out there. But, um, yeah, it is kind of a black hole thing. And I, and I think that it just got blown out of proportion. So uh, that's where I am with it. And and I think, yeah, the team should make a decision. And it, it, once they figure it out, then it's what the team decides to do. The only thing that I, I don't like is what um, Jesse was talking about uh, as far as him um, 
saying, you know, uh, Proby saying the stuff about the religion thing uh, for the pregame skate, but then in his personal life doing other stuff, then that's a huge problem. That's being a hypocrite. Uh, you, you can't you can't choose your values um, and, and uh, based upon certain things and then not on other things. Like you're either this or you're not. Like you know what I mean. I, I, you can't say you're against this, but then in your private life you're for it. Like I, I don't understand. Then you should have. If that's really if that's the truth, which I'm pretty sure because Jesse's a pretty straightforward dude, then he should have wore the jersey and, and gone out there. If that if that's the case, but um, I'll just leave it at that. No, you're absolutely right, and fans too. I'm um, letting you know. Uh, for some reason, my uh, my headphone jack went out. So, um, our producer, hopefully, uh, um, you can fix this. Hopefully, fans aren't hearing uh, Mike like over. Yeah, different microphone, but whatever. But you know what? Jesse made a good point, and I didn't know that about that situation. And if he did that, that's been a hypocrite. I get it. If, if you want to act like that's your belief, or not act, I, I'm not trying to insinuate that it's not his belief, but if you want to like like do that, I get it. I respect it. But if you do that, and you don't want to uh, wear that jersey, but then you, in your personal life, you go against other things in your like religion, but that's, you know, that, that's not cool at all. And at first I was like, okay, because I haven't really been like focusing on that much and then I haven't been like divulging myself. I obviously I have my dad stuff. I haven't been doing that, but that now kind of rubs me the wrong way. It's like no, it's you have to be a professional, and you can't just pick and choose, and you can't pick and choose what your religion entails. Like if you're gonna follow religion to the to the T, then you follow it to a T. You just can't be like, okay, well I'm not gonna wear this, but then I'm gonna go out and do things that are gonna go against my religion. That 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 doesn't seem right to me at all, and. At first, I was kind of like, okay, I, the small gist that I read of it, because like I said, I haven't really been reading a lot in the hockey, but Jesse is a, a, a credential Flyers, uh, Flyers, uh, a media guy. He's a big Flyers fan. He knows what he's talking about. So after hearing his uh, his statement and stuff, his uh, stuff, it just kind of just rubs me the wrong way now with uh, with that. And it's just, no, you, you can't do that. And you kind of let your team down. And you brought this big controversy, and it seems like you kind of like divided hockey fans now. Now it's like, okay, it's it's this versus that, but it's not that. It, it, there's more, it, there's more gray area, and it's just, it's it, 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 I don't know that that's kind of bad now. Like if you have a religion and you want to like stick with it, then that's fine, do it. But you can't just pick and choose when you do it, or you can't just like, okay, I'm not gonna do this, but then I'll go at my personal life and and do that. No, I I don't agree with that one bit. I respect everyone's personal choice, personal opinion. I don't care what you believe in. Like I said, if it's not malicious, if it's not uh, hurting animals or children or, or beating your spouse, I, I respect anything you believe in. It's just that was not cool. And I, I, I'm glad that we brought Jesse on the podcast to talk about that. Like I said, Mike, I was trying to text you. I said, hey, should, we, should I call Jesse? And I sent it to him actually. So I, I, I ran with it and it worked out perfectly because Jesse's insight was really uh, – really insightful and i'm glad that i was able to talk to him in person and and he, he really put it in perspective uh, on what we should all like think and believe in because it's not just like black and uh black and white it's that gray area that he really pointed out for us yeah i it, i mean it does knowing that is different because i i hadn't ever heard that so i'm, I'm sure that that's some some low-key info that he has that hasn't gotten out there and i think you're right what makes it bad is it's not only that like you know being a hypocrite and all that that's bad enough as it is but now you got all, all these people that turned against each other and were fighting each other on social media about this and that that's the problem that's what i don't like i don't like when there's that division uh over stuff like that and and now what seemed like it might have been kind of okay but now it's like well you, you change your mind when you're doing other things like come on dude like if if that's how he is and his personal life then you should have just wore the jersey with everybody else like I, that doesn't it doesn't make sense but I, I don't know so very interesting uh, good to have jesse on there and and yeah we are going to have some more shows we know that the trade deadline's coming up i actually end up getting the day off my schedule kind of switched up a little bit so i don't know what we may do we may eddie and i may do something or maybe with something with jesse I don't know. I got to try to figure out how that's all going to work out. But um, uh, we'll wrap up the show. A really long one this time. 
Uh, we, you know, a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of controversial topics on this show. Um, uh, you know, just a really, really good show. A lot of stuff we covered. Um, you know, appreciate your guys' support. Um, if you get a chance, uh, Eddie posted a GoFundMe link on his Twitter and Facebook, and you want to help donate for his, his father, um, you know, he'd greatly appreciate it. Um, any amount doesn't matter. It could be like five bucks, you know, it, you know, anything is greatly appreciated. Uh, and I'm glad that Eddie, you know, you could come back on the show. So, um, any, any final words before we wrap this up, Eddie? Yeah. Oh, well, well once again, I'm sorry. My, my, my headphone jack just kind of, kind of broke right now. So I had to buy a new laptop this weekend so I can go on the new shows. Um, yeah, just be honest with my, with the fans and, and everyone, our viewers, um, I said I, I took. I wasn't sure if I can do this show, but it's just your your support and your guidance, Mike. Yours too, Jesse. Even just hearing Jesse's voice and talking to him, him jumping on the show abruptly like that. Um, yeah, everything helps. It's cool. Like, it's just yeah. I mean, I'm gonna try my hardest to to try to be more consistent on the show. Uh, I just need a little bit more time, and I think my problem is I I haven't had the grieving process yet, so. Uh, fans bear with me and Thomas thank you for being on the show Alexis thank you for jumping on I'm looking forward to to being on this show uh, more uh, back to kind of routine and look forward to a trade deadline if I can uh, you know like contribute and help but yeah um, yeah I, I want to say a lot it's just my mind's kind of spinning right now and I don't I don't really know how to divulge the information that I have and 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 Mike, I'm sure you understand. It still feels like it's like not a reality of of my dad not being here. So it just it, it's kind of hard. But I really appreciate the fans and, and my, you know the friends that we have and you guys, you, your support and your love. It's just it's just overwhelming and it's, it's amazing from everyone. I, I can't even I, I can't even so I can't thank you guys enough. Mike, thank you for letting me uh, rant on about my dad too, which I know you wouldn't have a problem with that at all. But I'm glad I was able to come on this show. I'm glad I was able to talk. And uh, hopefully I, I can be ready and start doing this show more consistently. But, you know, thank you guys. I love you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Yeah, absolutely, man. You just take your time. You know, it's all good. We'll 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 figure it out. We'll see. The show must go on. You know, we'll keep we'll keep doing stuff. It's, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of F-bombs on this show. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. I know it was a, it was a long one, uh, a lot of, lot of stuff to talk about. Um, we'll definitely have some more. We'll figure it out uh, as we go, but, you know, we'll keep on rolling this season. And um, as always, let's go Ducks.